Good morning, everybody, and welcome to my third weekly video of uh, living with Alzheimer's. Now, today I'm going to talk about a little bit about the uh, the drug trial I'm on um, in London. But um, first of all, I wanted to talk about. Um, I had a question sent to me by a lady, and um, she's asked the difference between early onset Alzheimer's and Alzheimer's also what age I was diagnosed at and how it's affected me from the time of being diagnosed through till sort of the present day. So basically, the first part of the question, the, there isn't really any difference between early onset Alzheimer's and Alzheimer's. The, the only difference is that early onset is being diagnosed before the age of 65. Now I was 50 when I was diagnosed and I will be 53 this November and it took about three years to get a proper diagnosis which I don't think in my age group is that unusual and that's something that I've heard um, more often than not. Now being diagnosed at the age of 50 or at my age group presents a, a lot of problems because generally people in my age group are fit and healthy and more often than not we have um, mortgages uh, and, and other financial commitments and also jobs um, that we have to uh, have to work so it's it's different to being diagnosed at the age of retiring age um, it affects all aspects of your of your life. A, a lot of people think that Alzheimer's is just a memory thing, um, but it's it's not. It it affects um, speech. It can affect um, a movement, sight. <coughs> it it can affect all sorts of things. The the way that you 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 carry out things and the way that you perceive life. So it, it has many different effects. I mean, basically, <clears throat> everybody with Alzheimer's is on the same journey, but we're just taking different paths. It affects different people differently. Now, since I was diagnosed, um, I suppose Alzheimer's has taken away the ability for me to read much at all. Um, if I start to read anything, I forget the first part that I have read. And as, as I go down the page, the next few lines that I'm reading have no real relevance to the, um, the first part. So, <clears throat> in effect, I end up going up and down, up and down the page and not really getting anywhere. So, so reading has become a problem. Um, it has also affected the way I write. I can write short sentences and... Um, uh, on doing things like on my tablet, I have got an app which which helps me to um, to write. It predicts what I want to write, so it's sort of like a predictive texting, but it's a little little better than that. Um, and that helps. But I'm very fortunate because it it hasn't affected my speech too much. Um, I do forget words, and I do get muddled up with things. This is why I do these videos very early in the morning because. I am a lot better, a lot sharper, um, and I'm not so good in the afternoons. It, it's difficult sometimes. Um, in actual fact, people like me, doing the normal things, like making a cup of tea, can be a bit of a task. Now, if somebody was to ask me to make a cup of tea now, right this moment, um, that wouldn't be a problem. I'm fairly confident I could go in and do it. If somebody asked me to make a cup of tea in an hour's time or two hours time, it's very likely that I might get in a muddle with it. It, it might not quite flow. And it's about putting the parts of the puzzle together. Something that is probably very simple and mundane, like making a cup of tea, it can be quite a task for somebody with Alzheimer's. And I suppose one of the best ways to explain that is like if you go out and you buy a new piece of equipment, let's just say a new phone, 
and you're not sure quite sure how that foot works, but you sort of stumble around and you work it eventually, and um, get the uh, get the hang of it. And it's you know that you have always made a cup of tea, and you know that it's something that you have done thousands and thousands and thousands of times, but it it's just not quite there. It's as if it's something new, and that can be quite that can be quite a difficult thing to cope with sometimes. Um, it's also things like preparing meals. Um, if my wife was to ask me to prepare a load of vegetables for a meal, then I probably couldn't do it. I wouldn't know really where to start. But what we tend to do is we have a whiteboard and there is a list drawn up <coughs> of things to do. And very often I will put a box round every item. <coughs> so um, peel carrots. Uh, it says peel carrots with a box around it. <coughs> and if I stage the tasks, put them into units, and do as I do each individual task, I wipe the wipe it off the list so it's gone. So in effect, by the time I get to the bottom of the list, there's nothing on the list at all, and everything is prepared and and ready to go. And that's the, the easiest way to do it, although I find the best way to do it. Talking, as I said, I, I, I'm very, very fortunate. It's the last frontier that I have got. It's something that hasn't been taken away from me, and I'm hoping that it will keep with me for a long while as yet, <clears throat> because I'm unable to write much to uh, to do anything, to write a journal or to write uh, my story down. Um, this is the only medium I have left. This is the only the only way of, of communicating. Um, but I do find that if we go out and we have a there's a group of people. I mean, one to one talking is okay. But if I go out and there's a group of people, four, five, six. It's very difficult for people like me to understand what's being said. It, in actual fact, it becomes a noise. There is nobody actually talking anything. It just becomes a complete baffling noise because our brains cannot process the information quick enough. So you, if there's a group of you and um, we're just sitting there, then a person with dementia can just end up sitting there and saying nothing because we're not in the conversation we can't understand what anybody is saying <clears throat> but one-to-one -one is okay so what i tend to do in a situation like that is i tend to pick out one person that i find is in the conversation and is is, is pretty okay and they're talking about it and they're involved in it and i pick that one person and I focus on one individual person. That way, I feel I'm still in the conversation and I'm still part of it. Because the last thing that people like me need to be is, is out of the loop. Because it can make you very quickly withdrawn. And, well, I don't know. You, you, just, need, you just need people. You just need stimulation. So I focus on one individual person. And I find that that, that works. It it's, it's all about narrowing things down. It's all about staging things. Um, it's all about not having the puzzle as, as, as in one piece. It's about pulling the puzzle apart and dealing with the individual pieces. <coughs> and that makes it easier, breaking things down. And it uncomplicates things. The less information you have going in at one time, the better you can cope with certain things. Do things individually and do them well, rather than try and do everything as one big block and make a mess of it. <clears throat> in actual fact, if I do happen to cook a, 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 a meal and I do prepare everything and I make that as a success, then um, that goes in my little positive book. <laughs> now, having said all that, there's, there, there is one positive thing about this. There is a hope, I feel, at the end of the tunnel. There is light at the end of the tunnel, I suppose, is the right term, not hope. But I I embarked on a drugs trial um, 
to specifically help with Alzheimer's. And it was something that my wife did because when we would, when I was, I, well, it is we were diagnosed because a diagnosis is not just for me, it's for the whole family. When I was diagnosed, I, we came out of hospital and if you get diagnosed with dementia, Alzheimer's, you come out of hospital with nothing. You, you haven't got an appointment card or, or anything. You just come out and you're left, you and the family, on their own. And it's, it's difficult because they, they give you a, a prognosis and say, you know, look, the disease is progressing at a certain rate and you've got six to eight years left. And, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a bit of a kick in the stomach. But my wife wasn't having that, and she thought that wasn't good enough. So she put my name forward over the internet for um, available to do trials, be involved in drug trials for Alzheimer's. And um, we got a, a, a great response. And we, we, we picked one trial that's in London. And if anybody wants to know the name of the trial, then do message me and I will... I will let you know. It's it's something that I think a lot of people are not getting involved in. And I hear it all the while. F winning the war against Alzheimer's. Winning the war against dementia. Now, that's, that's great. But in order to win a war, you've got to win battles. And these drug trials people, they need people like us, like me, like you if you're in the early stages like me, to go on to drug trials, they need us to help them finalise their drugs. Because without people like us, they can't get a result. They can't get a cure. Now, I've been on this trial now for, um, I think come December, it'll be two years. And I've, I've found it very good. It's, it gives me a sense of purpose. It gives me... Um, something to focus on and that you're part of the fight you're part of the battle and you are doing some good that's the that's the thing of it and I must say that if my wife hadn't have thought how she did for me and got me on this trial it is very likely that I wouldn't be talking to you as I am now now there's whether it's a whether it is the the drug that's doing me some good or whether it's up here and I think it's doing me some good it doesn't matter I believe that it has kept me on a fairly even keel through the last year or more and I, I do believe it has kept me stable now as I say whether I'm just thinking that or what it, it doesn't it doesn't matter because <laughs> whichever way you look at it it's a positive thing and it's hope and it works to a degree because here I am here today talking to you. So I think that, um, yeah, people people should get on these drug trials and don't be afraid of them. You know, I, I've i had very good experience of the one that I'm on. And um, it, 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 it's all part of the battle. So if anybody wants any information about that, you can private message me and I will give you the details of the people that I'm with. They're in London and also they have um, other clinics throughout um, throughout the country. It is, <coughs> it is worth a go. And um, do, do please consider it. Now, I've rattled on here now for 14 minutes and I think, wow, that's, uh, that's long enough. So I hope I haven't bored you. And um, thank you so much for listening. And um, I will have a chat with you and give you an update on how I'm doing next Friday. All the best. Thank you.